I'm Sarah Lacey. And I'm Paul Carr. And welcome to another edition of Wisest News. This is it's almost a habit. like we're doing the show again. <laughs> I know. It's, we got the band back together. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? Um, we are going to talk about boosterism. We are going to talk about Sounds like why Europe. it is never a good idea to put out phony stats and press releases claiming something that isn't true, because if you're actually making an interesting point, it's completely obscured by this ridiculous PR claim that you made. It sounds like you have a specific example in mind, <laughs> I have to say, rather than you just thought that would be a good theme for a Well, show. we do see about 10, like, 10 examples of this every day in each of our in mailboxes. And, and they seem to come always from the same sad continent. <laughs> <laughs> Not it's, always. It's, but you know how when you get spam, it always seems to be like from Nigeria, like certain types of spam. There's other kinds of mail that always seems to come from <laughs> Europe. Now, I realize this is going to cause consternation among our, our friends and loyal colleagues at uh, TechCrunch Europe. And I know that some European entrepreneurs may object. But it's just getting increasingly sad now. So the example we're referring to was um, a, I, I don't want to call it a study. No, it's like it was, calling it was the a manipulative. It was a manipulative PowerPoint. Yeah. I mean, let's do this quickly because we've covered this twice on TechCrunch now, and like pointed out the whole thing. Yeah. We can link to those. Essentially, a German venture firm called Early Bird Ventures. Um, that what they promised us. This was what was pitched to us. Yeah. Was um, was first. something that said why European venture capital is overtaking the U.S. Yeah, outperforming. Outperforming. Yeah, in in returns. Yeah. Um, and to which, looking at simply LinkedIn's ten billion dollar IPO, I said. That is absolute bullshit. You thought, goodness there me, is, our coverage of Europe is. is really lacking because we hadn't heard about any of these. There must be a company it's bigger like, than LinkedIn. So you, know, you know off the bat, this is going to be absolute Total crap. Total bullshit. And so, and, and when you when we got the study, I mean, as you know, Mike Butcher and I did an article, we had another guest post today. I mean, I basically went through debunking slide after slide until I just got bored with it and yeah. like went and had dinner. And it was yeah. like, it, it was still about 20 points. But we don't want to talk the main, about the specifics. No, but, it's but the let me say, but the main problem with the study, in my mind, um, which is what people keep forgetting, is it was comparing over a couple year period, yeah. which was not statistically relevant in mm -hmm. any way, how much money was hap was going into startups and how much uh, venture capitalists were making. Yeah. And the problem with that is, and so, that, so that's what they were saying was the multiple of return yeah. that was outperforming the US. Now the problem with that was, that was not money going into a startup and money coming out of a startup. The money going in over the period were going into other companies. Yeah. So it was as if I was making loans as a bank and I was going around lending you money and Mike money and Heather money. And then I had lent, Sounds you know, cool. I had lent hundreds of, do hundreds of thousands of dollars years before and that loan came in and I'd be like, well, Mike and Paul and Heather all came off really well because I lent to them yeah. this year. I mean, it, it made it's zero meaningless. sense. No one has ever measured venture capital that way. But the point they, that, that was a relevant point was European venture capital is hugely declined. Yeah. And we're starting to see some exits off of deals that were done several Way years back. ago, yeah. which is a decent argument. Which is an interesting point. But they refused to do that. Well, perhaps had they not got their intern to create the report, we might have seen it produced slightly better. I mean, as it, uh, the, the one thing for me that came out of the guest post today was the person pointed out this was actually made, largely written by an intern. Like, it was like his summer project. I mean, and yet, but that to me speaks to the wider point, which is the Europe is desperate. Like... A study produced by an intern put out by a venture firm that we don't really know much about is held up by... We had people that we know in Europe saying, this is a big story. Right. Uh, look, look, this proves everything we've... Giga Home did a big story out here. It was and they done, about here. Right, and they, but people did... Uh, but the Europeans particularly did almost no diligence on yeah. it. They just simply went, look, it proves yeah. it. And we should say TechCrunch Europe did. Uh, did do diligence. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, you and Mike wrote a yeah. joint story, and that's how it should be. It should be, if it, you are going to talk about both markets, you should have someone for both markets doing it. I uh, know TechCrunch Europe's reporting was good on it. Um, but the, 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 it's just, for me, it's another example of a, a bigger problem, which is, if you're, I, I would love Europe to, just because people then shut up about it, to outperform Silicon Valley. It would be amazing to see. Um, you know, I always like it when David beats Goliath and all this other stuff. I would How, like for my labor to be painless, too. I would like for your A lot of things painless. we would like are just not possible. Right. It's not a big enough market. Right. There's, I mean, it, it's a stupid setup to begin with. But let me, let me say my point, which is that... We know it's not happening by how much noise Europe is making saying that it is happening. And this is the point. If somebody really is outperforming, at the, by any metric you want to use, Silicon Valley is outperforming, or the US, but particularly Silicon Valley is outperforming Europe. 
And that's why Silicon Valley isn't sending out press releases telling the world. You don't see VC firms in the Valley sending out press releases saying we're beating Europe. It would just look ridiculous. It'd be right. like, well, we know that. Of course you are. And we will not know. We will start to think that maybe Europe is beating Silicon Valley when they stop telling us they are. And when we don't see another study. And it's... It's, and, or, and we, the, or we'll know they've gotten over an obsession with trying to beat Silicon Right, and Valley, we see it with the individual and startups, just too. And created their own ecosystem of notes. Right, and we see it with the individual startups, too. Um, we see these startups time and time again basing their entire premise on we are going to beat uh, Silicon Valley at their own game. And we have been guilty of this a bit in TechCrunch Europe. Individual entrepreneurs are way guiltier of saying, we're going to, we've seen... Silicon Valley is doing location-based. We're going to do a location-based service that's going to beat Silicon right. Valley. And it's like, don't be so ludicrous. Well, and right? you have you know, the location-based service uh, in question would always, every time they saw you, they would corner you and say, why are you guys right about Foursquare and not us? Where are the two companies if now? If you have to ask, exactly. And, and the problem is this cause and effect. Companies in Europe will say, well, the reason we're not succeeding is no one's writing about us. And no, the reason no one's writing about you is because you're not succeeding. That is such crap. Spotify has... That is such, I mean, that is such crap. Like, what? First of all, LinkedIn, again, $10 billion IPO. There's probably not a social networking company we've written about less on TechCrunch no, than LinkedIn. True. I think LinkedIn is, a, is an example of someone who doesn't really need TechCrunch no, to boost it. But no, it, but that's my point. Any good people, entrepreneur I'm not does not about, need the media but I'm not to talk, boost them. I'm not talking about TechCrunch. I'm talking about generally speaking. To argue that the reason we're not successful is because no one's heard of us is right. exactly backwards. People that's keep, my point. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. So the, the, question, so the, the point being that if, you sp if Europe just spent a little less time, and, and even Spotify, which we, will, which we will all acknowledge is a European success story, is, or is... Right on track to become in a European success story in terms of product yeah. and is on track if it continues doing well to become a legitimate uh, startup well, of notes. product to product of is just as impressive as any music yeah. product Better, in, the US. in fact, than a lot of them. Yeah. And, that's, and, it, and to be fair to Spotify, always has been. The problem mm -hmm. with Spotify was never the product. Spotify's biggest problem, though, was this constant obsession with we're going to launch in America, we're going to launch in America, we're going to launch in America. Promising things it wouldn't do. Now they've we're going to be profitable. I mean, all the things that they Right, and now they've actually launched. Right. Now they see their best chance of actually succeeding. Now, and, and it's interesting now that they've succeeded that they've kind of shut up. They've, mm -hmm. they've stopped being so aggressive in this, like, we're doing this, we've, we're profitable, we're whatever. They're just getting on with it now, and they're letting people see it for themselves. And, I, and yeah, it just, it, as someone who had startups in the European startup scene who has lots of friends who are actually doing way better than I ever did in the European startup scene. Not hard. It is no point. But it is absolutely almost, a, a, you know, a, a, an exact correlation between the ones who aren't making a massive fuss about being right. European and we're going to beat Europe. So look at Moshi Monsters, almost never plays this whole we're beating Silicon Valley card. It's just getting on with it. Mm -hmm. They're, by any metric, the most uh, Spotify accepted the most interesting startup coming out of Europe at the moment. Uh, even the sort of smaller ones that are, that are just gently trending upwards, the, the moves and the, the companies like that, are just getting on with it. And they have bases here and they don't need to prove that they're, that they're out, that Europe's winning. It seems to me that another thing that startups in Europe have discovered is if they don't have that good a startup, then a good way to get lots of attention in Europe is to start writing about how, how Europe is going to be Silicon Valley. There's a mm -hmm. lot of entrepreneurs in, in London, particularly it just happens to be where I know, and I'm sure it's the same in Berlin and wherever else, who their product is not interesting, but they're massively, but everybody knows about them, everybody talks about them purely because they're these big champions of, of Europe, the European startup scene. And it's, it's just a lazy way to get attention. But, but I guess maybe we're playing into it too, because we put the study on TechCrunch three times. Well, so. we've also debunked it three times. No, I'm not no. sure all press is good press. Yeah, I was just trying to work that out today when I was reading. I was thinking, is early bird succeeding because we're all talking about it? I, I don't think they look good at all. I and I think they that they should hopefully have learned not to let interns produce reports if that's indeed what happened. Yeah. Um, but I get interns to write most of my stuff on TechCrunch, though, and it's never done me any harm. I have but to say. what was so frustrating about the early bird report is they actually had a really good insight, mm -hmm. which was that, you know, as we've reported, as venture capital has just plummeted in Europe, yeah. there actually are returns. And yeah. so it's actually probably a good time. And they, they talked about how valuations were more reasonable. I mean, they actually had some good insights, yeah. but they wrapped it in this, at best, intentionally misleading PowerPoint yeah. and pitch. At worst, outright lie yeah. of putting together numbers. And what, so what's frustrating is today, we also had on TechCrunch News that uh, the investment in Europe was dramatically down. And yeah. so, you know, the top line story is, Wow! No, we thought maybe Europe. No, it turned out they were even more wrong. <laughs> Europe is more is more screwed up than it's we thought. Even more screwed, yeah. Had they done the original their original point, that would have been that yeah. would have been bo bolstering what they were saying. But again, it's, it's just, 
You never win by trying to manipulate people to present an argument that isn't true. And again, it's that question of, um, it's the same with the startups, which are there are some probably perfectly decent startups, but they're so obsessed with beating mm -hmm. the value, they don't just get on with creating these perfectly decent startups, Where, which is exactly um, an exact contrast to something like China, where yeah. you've talked before about how they just don't give a fuck. And they're like, yeah, China's the opposite. So China's fine with someone saying, you know, oh, this is just the Chinese ripoff of Google. They're yeah. like, Thank it. Yeah, you know, yeah. go ahead. Like, yeah. no, actually, we've built a massive company that's incredibly different. Um, and they just, they, they build these things and they don't particularly care. Yeah. So let's close with some, like, good um, rules of thumb for people pitching TechCrunch. So I don't would say. Don't get your interns to write your reports. I would say that's <laughs> one. one. Yeah, I would say, I would say, assume that we understand basics about how the venture industry works and that you can't just throw fat stats out. Yeah, it's it rare. It makes numbers. It's I mean, very treat rare us that with we'll... enough respect that we've seen stats on venture capital. Before. Yeah, when it comes to venture capital and investment, uh, if you're going to come to us with a press release, and I say us as people in Silicon Valley rather than with my European hat on um, for a second, if you're going to come to us with something that basically says, aha, no, fuck you, Silicon Valley. Right. Assume that we're at least going to read beyond the headline before we publish it. Right. Um, so that's a good that's a good metric. I don't think, start a fight that you've already lost. Right. Um, is a good or one. don't frame the argument in a way you can't win. Right. So I think another one would be. I don't think you can just send it to TechCrunch Europe and and somehow like it, we won't talk about. No, they did like, test as well. Oh, they did. Is it Robin Waters who's? Yeah, Belgian. Well, but writes for TechCrunch. Yeah. Yeah, U.S. Yeah, yeah. Um. So uh. So that's one. So then uh. Yeah. The other point would be, you know. Stop saying, you know, why are you always giving this attention to this person? Yeah. Pay attention to us too, because then you're just you're pointing out that you're the weaker. That's an imi you've immediately lost if you do that. It's it's the minute you admit that you're the the minute you come out and, and plead that you're the underdog. Like if you're the underdog, let us decide that. Let right. us decide to champion you. And we have championed plenty of underdogs before. Right. And they we but we tend to champion the ones. And again, people get the cause and effect of this around the wrong way. They say, well, you know, this company had so much support from TechCrunch, they succeeded. TechCrunch cannot make a no, good startup. No, we a just bad startup are good. pretty good at picking yeah. good startups yeah. that also have momentum and also have users and have great products. Yeah. Um, With the exception of some of Mike's investments. I was like just Dan's about Dan. to say, if you want an example of how TechCrunch <laughs> cannot make or break your startup, look at Mike's investment portfolio. You can have it's him 100% awful. financially invested in you, but if it's crap, it's crap. I think it's generally like the rule of thumb is that old thing that you always see with conferences where invariably the most important person is the shortest bio. Yeah. Yeah, that's why mine just says kind of a dick. <laughs> um, uh, that's it. Yeah, so those are really the rule of thumbs. Don't be, don't get your intern to write your report. Don't be a dick. Uh, assume we're going to do some basic fact checking. And and just generally speaking, ask yourself: Is there a maybe? It's not such a good headline, but is there does do I have a story that that actually that has I would want to read? That I want to read and actually has some weight and some thing. Don't don't think what's the good headline. Think what have I actually got here? What can I and and let us write the headlines. We're pretty good at it sometimes. Other times we're not. <laughs> I never am. Uh, yeah. Join us uh, next we, week. Might, we might have another why is this news. We might not. You might skip well, the It depends on this guy. I mean, well, got, it depends on this guy. Well, it depends on this guy. But yeah, I could at any it point. It depends on these guys. Uh, it depends on these guys. <laughs> the, the children in the room. Um, but it's, we, may or, we, may, we may have another show. Maybe join us next year. Maybe. On why is this news. <laughs>